Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and in this video we are taking a closer look. How big is the difference between unarmed the fist weapons and two-handed weapons? Because as you probably know, before One Way Stunt the difference was huge, but One Way Stunt changed a lot in damage calculation. Therefore let's see if still those extra bonuses that unarmed weapons can get matter and how much. But just before we start allow me to welcome our latest Patreons and those are Clapadays, Jim, Dennis McBride, Martin Hubblebauer, Valator GT, Michel M and Aram. Welcome to the Tartus Army guys. Thank you a lot for your support. It helps me a ton to produce more content for you. Thank you. Something is attacking me here. What is this scorch doing? Okay, we, we have uh, visitors. Okay, let's uh, quickly deal with them and then we can we can talk more. All right, I think visitors I dealt with uh, first. Uh, I think I will heal all the rats and we'll see how the situation look like on the full health first. And by the way, I will unequip Iron Fist because we are comparing two-handed weapons with one-handed weapons and as you can See here, for unarmed weapons we have only one perk, but for two-handed, if you want, you can equip three perks. Then that can make a difference, although in case of melee weapons, not as huge as you would think, because other multipliers, like strength for example, matters a lot. Now about my legendary perks, uh, at this moment, important one is hack and slash to do, get those extra damage in VAT, but we'll be comparing without it because it's 50% chance to trigger and it's not super consistent for testing, then we'll be just using it without VATs, although we'll compare the VATs cost. Uh, then those are my other special strength not max out yet, I need to work on that. And taking one for the team will not be in use because we are solo without a team, then this perk will be dormant, it will not work. As well as you can see, I unequip my adrenaline because I don't want damage to be changing as we'll be exploring the situation. And currently I have like no bonuses. Uh, I only disab disabled my side effects of empath mutation, but yeah, no bonuses. My standard melee mutations that can include talons and twisted muscles. And now I have a couple weapons that are like top in the class, including like the war glaive for the reason of utility of this freezing damage. But for damage purposes mainly, we'll be taking a look on hitting super sludge at that that is still a top two-handed melee weapon, the highest damage and widely available, then this is really good. And now the weapons that are worth to mention, we have a tenderizer from a midweek from Mr. Graham. That is a really cool weapon, although not the strongest, but really cool one and worth to mention as well stuff, ship squad stuff. That's a super rare weapon actually to get a legendary and even harder to get modifications only from free range event then we have it in yeah for damage comparison purposes but basically it's almost the same like a super sledge then there is no need to use it in practice now as we are still at full health and our ap pool is super low we'll test how much it costs first to attack in vats with an armed weapon versus two handed weapon because that's a huge difference the swing speed is important, but costing VATS is even more important. Uh, let's see how does it look if we attack once in VATS. We can, we can attack twice and we are losing less than half of our AP bar. Now let me just quickly change for a two-handed, the super sledge. I heal to make sure that my unyielding is not triggering. And let's try to attack this super mutant now, it's once twice it's definitely more expensive in vats it's definitely that you, you can see it it's definitely more expensive in vats now let's see the damage itself uh, with this super sledge level 75 super mutant that was a miss one hit two three four hits we got him it's almost exactly four hits level 75 super mutant uh, not this power fist uh, this one 
Oh, there is. There is level. Oh, two, two of them this time. One. Come on. Two. Three. Four. It's more damage. Okay, it's more damage. It was clearly less than four. And bleed damage was taking effect from the mutation. But that, that being said, uh, let's go for a low health. We need to go for some toxic goo. Now we'll drop our health to Ned Rage Wrench and as well apply a standard food buffs that Malay is supposed to be using. Then here we are, the proper amount of this stuff. Now some kind of a food that will boost our damage further. We'll take some drink as well. More melee damage. We'll not use the rare one. We're not using the plus 30%, only 20% ones, the most commonly available that you can easily stockpile. And this glowing mid stake, strength buff from death close stake. And I think those are the important buffs. Yep, we have the important buffs applied. We have our health low and about the perks. We do have Ned Rage active, but no weapon specific perks at this moment and let's compare how it's looking now and now our punk shake power and fist went up to 454 damage and in the same time the super sledge 407 plus 27 that's 434 then you can see here difference seems to be getting smaller when you apply more buffs and let's see super sledge versus the stuff the stuff is slightly weaker, for some reason slightly weaker in here. I don't know how this is happening. Without the buffs, they equal. With the buffs, stuff seems to be losing a little bit. In the same time, the Peppa Tenderizer still cannot match the Super Sledge, although difference, like you can say, almost disappeared. It's interesting how it look after applying the buffs and the freezing work life. You can see very interesting behavior like this frost damage is going up higher than other damage and generally we are achieving now over 400 damage then that's really close to super sledge even though without any buffs Warglev was clearly behind the super sledge then you can see that those weapons do not behave linear the differences are changing like with the buffs not really proportional to each other then let's see what will it get now from punching those super mutants with empowered power fist with all those buffs and let's see how many punches it will take and then we'll see how many hits with a super sledge we just need like standardized level oh that's level 100 uh, level 100 is two hits now exactly two hits i don't know if we'll get another level 100 for super sledge but there is level 75 uh, we don't want them to kill us yeah, it's less than two hits. You can clearly see how it's look like. Uh, now let's see the super sledge. Hit at super sledge for the comparison. There is level 100 as well. Okay, it's crowding here, but level 100 went down in two hits with power fist. And almost went down with two hits with super sledge. Then super sledge, you can see, still see it's slightly weaker. Although... There is an option to apply more perks for the Super Sledge than you can apply for the Power Fist. Will it make a difference? We can try it. Unfortunately, for this re reason, we need to unequip Blocker and Barbarian. Uh, what really hits our defense, then I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Let's see how much extra damage we'll get from equipping all those free perks. Uh, okay, let me pick up this Legendary. I can actually need it and caps that's a level 75 perfect oh yeah now you can see it's better but now we have about the level of the power fist after applying all those buffs and in the peep boy 458 plus 33 then we are around 490 when power fist is 454 but it seems it seems to do better I think the puncturing mode can be helping here, even though we already have incisor, then we should be at about full armor penetration. Maybe we are just on the edge and that's how the power fist still outperformed the super sledge. 
And let me just unequip those perks again, equip the Iron Fist and defensive perks back. And this will be now a Power Fist with a perk. Only one, because there is only one. Uh, we have another level, another level 75. And you can see, yeah, it's way less investment to get the same performance than you can get from a Super Sledge. You have faster swing speed and cheaper VATs, then that's definitely a huge advantage, although you cannot use it in power armor, then that's, that's worth to mention. And for the bonus round, let's try the work life, the freezing one. Let's be nice and equip at least one slugger perk. And now we have this work life at some nice amount of damage. Can we find some super mutants? Level 75, perfect. And you can see the performance is about the same as Super Sledge, but you are getting this cool freezing effect. What's definitely better than if you have access to the work life with a good roll, use it. If not, then I would say, yeah, wait for the legendary crafting, because otherwise you will not get a good work life. It's like not possible, but look how cool it is. I think. If you consider that unarmed weapons do not have freezing effect, you can actually think here what's better. Is it better to have this freezing effect from the work life or is it better to have slightly higher damage and cheaper VATs from unarmed? I have no clue if explosion will be freezing them. Can we get super mutants together? And explosion. Yes, explosion is freezing them. It is freezing them. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, then I would say the freezing effect from work life will have a slight win in here. A little bit less damage, but I would definitely appreciate freezing the entire pack of ghouls with one swing. And now for the summary and some other differences between unarmed and two-handed. Then first the obvious one, unarmed weapons do benefit from Talon's mutation, what gives you a little bit of bleed damage and this extra damage. That's how unarmed weapons are going slightly ahead of two-handed two weapons. Although the difference, as you were able to see, is definitely small. Now, per weapon basis differences, some of them are silent, some are not. Uh, work life is silent, power fist is silent, super sledge is loud, a uh, pepper tenderizer is loud and I forgot about vampire stuff. You will need to Google. But yeah, those are the differences. Uh, apart from that, two-handed weapons have slow swing speed, where an armed weapon have medium and consequences of that, it's look like unarmed weapons have significantly cheaper attack in VATs. Although if you're running full set of unyielding, you should be fine in VATs, no matter what kind of weapon you are using. And for the winner, I will go with a work life from the two-handed weapons as exception to the rule because of this freezing effect that can work as AOE freezing effect if you combine it with legendary perk Hack and Slash. And that's my recommended perk for melee, by the way, since they fix VATs. Purely for DPS purposes, puncturing power fist seems to be holding the throne no matter what, it, it's still the winner. Plus, a side note, you can use Vintage Nuka Shine to boost an arm damage even more. But the era of multiplicative damage bonuses is behind us and it's always changed with one wasteland. It's not as huge boost as it used to be. It's not, it's a nice boost, but it's not a big boost. I can actually show you. Vintage Nuka Shine. And damage went up from 454 to 513. What's meant we got a little bit over 10% extra damage after drinking Vintage Nuka Shine and side effect of teleportation when it ends. Then worth it? Not worth it? Usually not worth it, unless you use a sugar-free one. I hope this video will be helpful for you if you have similar dilemma. What is better, two-handed, one-handed, then... Here you have your answers and it's end up being mainly your preference as those weapons at this moment perform 
so closely that if you have top tier two handed or unarmed, you are good. There is no huge difference between those weapons. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.